Hello, everyone, and welcome into Coach Craig's Sports. This is the NBA DFS Corpic video for today, Wednesday, January 10th. If you're joining me for the very first time, first of all, welcome in. Second of all, this is how today's video will be structured. We'll be going over a recap of yesterday's pick scene, how they ultimately end up turning out. Then we'll go over to Rotowire, talk about all the injuries in play for tonight's main slate. It is an eight game main slate in total. That the last two games of the night will not be on the main slate just in general. And then we'll get moved over to Fandle and DraftKings and talk about my core picks. So it's going to be one player at each position point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. But without further ado, we'll get started with that recap of yesterday's pick. So on the DraftKings side, we had Killian Hayes at point guard. $4,500 ultimately did end up in that starting lineup. Was looking for at least 23 out of him. Got to 18 and a half. So technically he was a mess yesterday. 31 minutes out of him. One for sure shooting from the field. So just didn't quite get there yesterday, which was a little bit unfortunate. And then we had Shane Sharp at shooting guard, $5,700. Was looking for at least 28, 29 out of him. Got 25 and a half. He was a mess and only played 22 minutes in this game. And it was a massive, massive blowout at that. So if the game's a little bit closer, probably looks a little bit better and pays off at his price tag. Then at small four, we have RJ Barrett, $6,500. Was looking for at least 33 out of him. Got to 47 and a half. So he was a really good hit on yesterday's slate. Then at power forward, with Chris Boucher, $4,500. You know, looking for 23 out of him. I thought he'd be in that starting lineup. He was not. Thaddeus Young did ultimately end up starting. Still wasn't too worried there at that point in time. I figured Chris Boucher would at least get 20 minutes, which was unfortunately not the case. He only got 14 minutes and got to 14.75 points on DraftKings, so so he ultimately ended up being a miss as well. And then last but not least, we had center. We had Isaiah Hartenstein, $6,400. Look for at least 32 out of him. Got to 34, so he was a hit. So a little bit of hit or miss day yesterday. A couple unfortunate ones there at that, uh, especially in regards to blowouts. And then Chris Boucher not ultimately end up starting and playing decent size minutes at that. Then on the Fandle side, we went with Jaden Ivey at $6,400. Looking for 32 out of him. Got to 39, so he was a hit for us yesterday. Then at shooting guard, we had OG Ananobi. $6,200. Looking for at least 31 out of him. Got to 32.8, so he was a hit as well. And then we had Caleb Houston at small forward, $4,600, looking for 23 points at him. Only got to 19.4, so technically he was a miss yesterday. Just not the greatest day for him overall, although he was in that starting lineup. Played decent sized minutes at that, but it was just not the greatest day for him in general. Then once again at power forward, we had Chris Boucher, $4,800, was looking for at least 24 out of him. Like I mentioned on DraftKings side, he only played 14 minutes in this game, got to 14.9 points, so unfortunately it was a miss. And then at center, we had Dwight Powell, $5,000, you know, felt like a pretty safe play. Was looking for at least 25 out of him, got to 20.3, so he was a miss. The Dallas Mavericks got blown out in this game by the Memphis Grizzlies with no John Morant and no Jaron Jackson Jr. I don't know how that happens, but it happens. So Dwight Powell lost a couple minutes there, only playing 22. If he plays, you know, close to 26, probably pays off at this price tag overall. So unfortunately, it wasn't the greatest day for us overall. If you had some other decent plays alongside some of these ones, especially like a DeMontis Simonis, you probably had a chance to cash him, but it was a little bit more difficult on yesterday's slate overall. But with that being said, we'll get moved over to Rotowire and talk about those injuries in play for tonight's slate. So once again, it is an eight-game main slate, but I will be going over all 10 games in terms of injuries. We got four teams in total there on back-to-back, -back, three that are on the actual main slate. So we start off with the Timberwolves there on the back-to-back. -back. We'll see if anything changes throughout the day for them, but I do kind of expect everybody to be healthy and playing for them tonight. For the Boston Celtics, they have Drew Holiday listed as questionable due to an elbow sprain. We'll see whether or not he plays tonight or not. Al Horford's dealing with an illness, so there is a chance that he misses tonight. He will either sit out today or tomorrow since it is a back-to-back -back just in general. And then there's Kristaps Porzingis listed with a knee injury is also questionable today as well. If I had to guess, I think Porzingis plays today, Al Horford sits out today, and then Horford plays tomorrow, Porzingis probably sits out tomorrow. That's just kind of my hunch, but we'll see what happens as the day moves along. Then we move over to the San Antonio Spurs. So we got uh, Sissoko, I think is how you pronounce his name. He has barely played for them at all this season. And Zach Collins both out for tonight's game. So pretty much what we've seen out of them as of late. Trey Pistons are on the back-to-back. -back. Safe to assume that these three players are going to be out once again. We'll see if anybody else does ultimately end up joining them as the day moves along. For the Washington Wizards, they appear to be all the way healthy at this point in time. The Indiana Pacers are without Tyrese Halliburton tonight. So he's going to be out for a little while. He's dealing with a grade one hamstring strain, and supposedly he's going to be reevaluated in two weeks. So we'll see whether or not it's Andrew Nemhart or TJ McConnell starting at point guard tonight. If it's McConnell, we'd have some interest in him. If it's Nemhart, probably not too interested in either one just because TJ McConnell is pretty priced up on both sides just in general tonight. 
Then we move down to the Sacramento Kings. They're on the back-to-back as well. Keep in mind that the Kings have played pretty terrible on back-to-back so far this season. So we'll see if that's the case once again tonight. And then on the Charlotte Hornets side, they're without LaMelo Ball, Gordon Hayward, Frank Neokina, and Mark Williams once again. P.J. Washington listed as doubtful due to his foot sprain. And then we got Cody Martin listed as questionable, who did miss their most recent game. Then we move over to the Philadelphia 76ers. Robert Covington and Joel Bede both remain out. And then we have DeAnthony Melton listed as questionable play for tonight's game overall. We'll see if he's back tonight or not. But I'm kind of leaning on the side of him not being back today. And I do like Kelly Oubre Jr. a lot in general, if that is the case. Then for the Atlanta Hawks, they have Gaye Hunter, Krevich, and Garrison Matthews. All this is out for today. Wesley Matthews listed as questionable. I believe it's a calf injury for him. Clint Capella is listed as questionable tonight with an Achilles injury. Uh, he's missed only a couple games so far this season. If he's out, Onyeko Okongu is going to look like an excellent play on both sides tonight overall. And then we have Trey Young listed as probable due to a shoulder injury. For the Oklahoma City Thunder, Davis Bertans, this is questionable due to illness. He did miss their most recent game, but not a major part of the rotation whatsoever. For the Miami Heat, we got Jimmy Butler listed as out. Then Caleb Martin and Kyle Lowry, both this is doubtful for tonight's game. Obviously, the biggest news here would be Kyle Lowry. We'll see who starts in his place, whether it's a Duncan Robinson, whether it's Josh Richardson or someone else just in general. And then for the Houston Rockets, they're without Dylan Brooks, Tari Eason, and Victor Oladipo once again. So pretty much what we've seen out of them in recent games. And for the Chicago Bulls, they're without Torrey Craig once again. Zach Levine, Alex Crusoe, both of is probable to play. Both did play in their most recent game, so no real concerns to be had there. For the New Orleans Pelicans, Matt Ryan continues to be out. Zion Williamson and Jose Alvarado, both of is questionable to play today. We'll see whether or not they ultimately end up playing. If Zion does miss and it's Trey Murphy in that starting lineup, he could have some pretty good value on tonight's slate overall. Then for the Golden State Warriors, Draymond Green, Chris Paul, and Gary Payton the second are all out for tonight's game. And then I believe it's Guy Santos is a guy that was recently called up for them. He's listed as questionable with an ankle injury of his own. Then we have the two games that are not on the main slate whatsoever. So the Denver Nuggets without Kankar and Strother once again. Utah Jazz appear to be all the way healthy at this point in time. And then we got the Toronto Raptors. They're on the back-to-back. We know Jakob Pirtle is going to be out today. Christian Coloco has been out all season, probably going to be out once again. And then we'll see whether or not Otto Porter Jr. or anyone else joins them for tonight's game overall. And then for the Clippers, it's just Musa Diabate out once again. But with that being said, that's a quick little rundown on all the injuries in play for tonight's slate. As always, I will be listing all the injury updates down in the comments throughout the day, as well as the starting lineups throughout the night. But with that being said, we'll get moved over to DraftKings and talk about my core picks over there. So we're going to start off at the point guard position when Jaden Ivey is $6,800, looking for 34 out of him. Pretty good matchup tonight against the San Antonio Spurs. One of the few teams probably that doesn't blow out the Pistons on a regular basis, so that is favorable for him. Obviously, he gets that step up with no kid Cunningham once again. Jaden Ivey's kind of been one of those players that's been super inconsistent throughout the year, so wouldn't be surprised you know, if he doesn't hit this point total that we're looking for out of him tonight but at the same time currently do have him projected for about 36 DraftKings points definitely does have some upside for more and then obviously could have a little bit of downside for less with the inconsistency that he's shown so far this season then at shooting guard I got Kelly Oubre Jr. here at $6,200 this kind of assumes that DeAnthony Melton is not playing today if Melton plays this will obviously switch over to someone else at that point in time but with Kelly Oubre Jr. here going against the Atlanta Hawks, it's a really favorable matchup in general. Currently, I'm projected for 32 points. Definitely could have some upside for more. Could have some downside for less, kind of depending on whether or not he's in that starting lineup, uh, depending on if his minutes get affected, if DeAnthony Melton does ultimately end up playing tonight. Then a small forward, we're going to go with Cam Whitmore here. So this is just kind of one to save some value. He's been playing decent size minutes. As of late, he's been playing decently well in those minutes. $3,600, looking for about 18 out. I'm currently on projected for 20. Maybe this is a value play that changes throughout the day, but at least early on, looks like a solid play overall. Then at power forward, we're going to go Kyle Kuzma, $7,800, looking for at least 39 out. I'm averaging about 38 so far on the season. Goes against the Pacers tonight. It's going to be a pace up spot just in general. So definitely do like the upside that he could present. He's been doing pretty well as of late. Currently I'm projected for 42 DraftKings points tonight. Definitely has some pretty strong upside for more at the same time though as well. And then last but not least at that center position, we're going to go with Anyeko Kangu. $4,800. If Clint Capella doesn't play, he's going to look like an excellent option on tonight's slate overall. Looking for 24 out of him. Averaging 23 essentially so far on the season. Currently have him projected for 28, 29, but definitely could have a ton of upside for more as well, especially with no Joel Embiid out there on the 76 year side at the same time as well. 
But with that being said, if you go with these five players that I do have listed, you have $20,800 remaining, just over $6,900 per player remaining. So a good amount of value left over, whether you want to pay up for a stud. There's not too, too many high, high price guys on today's slate. Obviously, the highest price guys that we're going to have, Shai Gildas Alexander, $10,500, Jason Tatum, $10,300, then you get down to DeMontis Sabonis at $10,000. So maybe it looks a little bit more like a balance build type of day. Obviously, a lot of different ways that we can approach the slate overall. It's going to make for a pretty interesting slate once again. It's been a pretty good week so far in terms of interesting slates. So hopefully we can take advantage of that once again today. But with that being said, we'll get moved over to Fandle and talk about my core picks over there as well. So on the Fandle side, we're going back to Jay and Ivy at point guard once again, $6,400, looking for 32 at him. Currently, I'm projected for 35, 36. Good matchup today versus San Antonio Spurs. Like I mentioned on the DraftKings side, guy that has been pretty inconsistent so far throughout the season. So hopefully that's not the case once again today. Don't really see the Spurs blowing this Pistons team out. Don't really see the Pistons blowing the Spurs out. So it should be a pretty competitive back and forth game just in general. Definitely do like the upside that he could present overall. But there is a little bit of risk of a downside at the same time as well. Then at shooting guard, we're going to Kelly Oubre once again, $6,300, looking for 31, 32 at him. Currently, I'm projected for 32, 33 tonight. Great matchup against the Atlanta Hawks. If DeAnthony Melton doesn't play, Kelly Oubre is going to be one of our core picks. If DeAnthony Melton ultimately does end up playing and Oubre doesn't start, then obviously we will be switching over to a different player at this position in general. Then we're going to move down to small four. We got Miles Bridges here, $7,900, looking for 39, 40 points out of him. He's been playing extremely well as of late. Pace up spot versus the Sacramento Kings tonight. There is essentially no bench for this Hornets team, so he's going to play as many minutes as he can handle just in general. Price tag probably should just be a little bit more at this point in time. Currently, I have him projected for 41 to 42. Do like the upside that he does present just in general. Then at power four, we're going right back to Nikola Jovic. Didn't play a lot of minutes last time out, but he did play really well in the minutes that he did play. $4,500, looking for 22, 23 out of him. Currently, I'm projected for about 23, 24 tonight, but definitely could have a little bit upside for more, which we've seen as recently as his last game. And then at center, we're going to Yeko Kangwu once again. So assuming Clint Capella is out tonight and Kangwu is going to look really good overall, $5,600, looking for at least 28 out. I'm currently, I'm projected for 29, 30 on the Fandle side tonight. Definitely does have a ton of upside for more at the same time, though, as well. But with that being said, if you go with these five players that I do have listed here on the Fandle side today, you have $29,000. $1,300 remaining, just over $7,300 per player remaining. So maybe looking a little bit more like a balance build type of day. But once again, if you want to pay up for some players, you can definitely do that on Fandle. Could be a couple of values that do open up throughout the day. Obviously, we will be keeping an eye on that as the day moves along, though. But with that being said, these are my core picks for both Fandle and DraftKings for today, January 10th. As always, if you have any questions related to NBA DFS, be sure to drop them down in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Also, be sure to note whether those questions are more Fandle or DraftKings specific just so I can best help you as quickly and efficiently as possible. And then, as always, I'll be listing all the injury updates down in the comments below as well as the starting lineups as they do get announced throughout the night. And then last but not least, my updated core will be out about 15 to 20 minutes prior to lock, maybe a little bit sooner than that. Just kind of depends on the day. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Obviously, yesterday we did have no changes to the core. If there's no changes to the core, we'll just leave that pin comment saying no changes to the core at this point in time. If there's any other additional changes after the point in time where I post the pin comment, I will leave them as a reply to that pin comment. So definitely make sure you're checking up as we do get closer to lock. But with that being said, if you are brand new to my channel, checking it out for the very first time or have yet to subscribe, please consider doing so definitely would appreciate it helps to build the community that we're trying to build here at coach craig sports which is one that's truly for you the viewers helping you with your dfs right now it's just nba dfs monday through friday in terms of the core pick videos nfl dfs is over for the regular season which is kind of the end of the season for my nfl dfs content but if you do have any questions related to that whatsoever feel free to reach out to me and i'll try to help you as best as possible at the same time as well and then last but not least if you're interested in sports betting if you're interested in prop betting whatsoever be sure to check out the links and promo codes down in the description below for bet us prize picks and parlay play if you are a brand new user to any one of those three sites you make your initial deposit, you will get a first match deposit bonus. For priority play and price picks, it's 100% of your initial deposit up to $100. And then for BetUS, it's 125% of your initial deposit up to $2,500. So some pretty great opportunities to be had out there. If you have any other additional questions related to sports betting, prop betting, just in general, feel free to reach out to me, whether it's down in the comments or on Twitter at Coach Craig Sport, and be more than happy to help you with that journey as well. But with that being said, that's all that I truly have for today's video. Definitely do appreciate each and every 
every one of you tuning in. Definitely means a lot to me. I hope that each and every one of you have a great rest of your day and some pretty good luck in NBA DFS tonight.